Hey, it's here on the Metal Theologian. I kind of have a lot of short stories for today. Like a lot of little things. This might be a little bit of sort of a disjointed kind of video, but some of these are the best ones anyway, so we'll see. If it sucks, you don't have to watch it. Of course, you won't know until it's too late and I've collected all that ad revenue, right? On my fucking videos that aren't even monetized. It's funny, that sort of becomes a point of pride after a while. Yeah, I don't monetize my shit, man, because I don't fucking need to do that. So, um... Yeah, we're listening to China Doll right now. So, um... Yeah, I've been listening to a lot of 45s. That's kind of still been the thing. I've been talking about that shit so much lately. I don't want to, like, try everyone's patience too much. So I might be listening to a couple today, but I'm not going to be showcasing them quite as much, I don't think. So, um... Yeah, so, uh... Thanksgiving weekend, which means uh, Black Friday, which means Record Store Day Black Friday. So, um... I thought about going out yesterday, but I actually... I get tension headaches sometimes. I had a bad headache that came on on a Wednesday night, and it really, well, it was pretty fucking bad on Friday, so I wasn't up for going anywhere, and I looked at the list, and it kind of all looked like bullshit anyway. But I went out today anyway, so, um, and actually with some specific in mind, that's going to be the second story, because this is my haul. This is what I got today on Record Store Day. I went around, I looked at all these fucking awesome new releases and shit, like that Marion Brown. Actually, you know something, man? I looked at that Marion Brown record, and I really like Marion Brown, okay? And that record looked really cool. Like, I like the two-man lineup and shit. Like, um, Coltrane made, uh, at least one, I'm thinking of Interstellar Space, made the record that's just like him with a percussionist. And those records can be fantastic, so I was really kind of interested to hear it. But, um, I turned it over and I started reading through the liner notes. And I gotta say, I just got put off by how fucking pretentious they were, man. And, I mean, I understand, like, it's a form of art and all that sort of thing. But it's like, if you look at the back of that fucking Marion Brown record, I wish I could remember the name of it because this video isn't going to age well because of it. But it's like, if you take a shot every time they use the word creative or creativity or some variation, you're going to be fucking, you're going to have alcohol poisoning by the end of the fucking, by the time you're done reading, you know. <laughs> you're not going to be able to finish it because your eyes are going to be so glazed over and shit. And I don't know, man, I just think that's lame, you know. Just, I, I don't want to hear, like, all this shit. I, I don't know, you know, I joke sometimes about how I don't really read liner notes. And a big part of that's just because I'm lazy, you know. And when you get enough records that look like this on the back, you just sort of get tired of it. The novelty kind of wears off, you know. I mean, I'm willing to spend an hour listening to this. I mean, if it's this record, more than an hour. You know, I love this record. But to sit here and, like, ugh, you know. I mean, there are exceptions. If it's something where I really don't have any clue. I mean, that's why I read the liner notes on the one today in the shop. Because I sort of wanted to get an idea of what it was about and see how bad I needed it. And I don't know. I'll probably still check it out eventually. There are a couple copies there. But I'm thinking I'll wait until there's a sale or something. You know, it's sort of one of those. So anyway. What did I need to sort of cleanse my palate after reading those fucking liner notes that irked me? This, man. <laughs> I'm not the world's biggest Nazareth fan. But I really love this record, and this is an early pressing, like with the gatefold. It's just the same shit as on the uh, inner and the uh, U.S. pressing, so you don't really need this. I didn't really need this, but it wasn't very expensive, and it's an early pressing on Mooncrest. So I was like, you know something, man? That just feels right, and I'm going to take that thing home and put it on as soon as I walk in the door, and I did, and it's great. I'll tell you one thing about this record, too, is I swear this has the best... Maybe. I'm not quite sure if I want to go all in with this, but I'm inclined to say that this has the best Bob Dylan cover on any record, at least any that I've heard. Yes, I would put it up there with All Along the Watchtower, because the Ballad of Hollis Brown doesn't sound like Nazareth, and it doesn't sound like Bob Dylan. It sounds like this fucking weird, doomy... I mean, it sounds like if doom metal existed in 1973, it's dirgy, it's slow, it's dark, and it's actually the song that won me over to Nazareth, you know, because I always kind of wrote him off, you know. I think I had a copy of Razamanaz or something, which is, you know, an okay record. I don't think it's as good as Hair of the Dog, frankly, even though it'd probably be more hip to, like, Razamanaz more. But this is the one that won me over, and I was like, okay, well, I heard, I heard that song on, like, an internet radio thing, and then I was like, okay, well, now I want to hear the whole album. And they started with Go Down Fighting, when I put on the whole album on YouTube or whatever it was at the time, and 
I was like, yeah, man, I can totally fucking hang with this. And by the way, how much does Axl Rose owe to Dan McCaffrey's singing style? But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I love this record. So, yeah, that's my haul. That's what I got for, uh, fucking, you know, record store day, Black Friday or something like that. You know, um... Part of it sort of put me in the pissy frame of mind where, you know, I sort of respond the way those liner notes in the Marion Brown. Because it's not like I just have this sort of, like, pent-up hostility for Marion Brown or anything that just came out or comes out in inopportune moments, you know. I mean, I love Marion Brown. I really, I mean... I, I, I mean, here's the other reason I can get that record. Is because, uh... Uh, I, I, I'd have to find him, but I, you know, not a shitload, but I have like three or four of his records sitting here, and I really like them. Yeah, this one I was really glad to find, this one took me a while to turn up. You know, it's great records, man. Anyway. Oh yeah, this one, of course, I mean, on ESP, I mean, come on, you know. You gotta have some fucking Marion Brown. And, uh... Yeah, this is a great one too, man. This was all the rage in the vinyl community around the time I started. It's like all the jazz channels were talking about this. So. Not that there were that many at the time, but they all seem to be related to the afternoon of a Georgia Fawn. So uh, this was uh, one of the ECM records that I actually really like too. So I tend to shit on that label a lot because I do think they're kind of a glorified new age label. But they put out some bangers, and that's one of them. Made a really good Dave Holland record early on too, actually. Anyway... The thing that started to get to me is just the grift of it all, you know? Just because you like a record doesn't mean you need a box set of it, you know? I mean, Way Out West by Sonny Rollins is a fantastic album. I don't need a fucking box set with, like, every alternate thing, you know? There's this thing called Other Records that you can find, you know what I mean? Instead of spending a hundred bucks on a box set of, I don't know... Just some dog shit, man. I mean, even if it's something good, though, is the point. It's not, it doesn't have to be dog shit for it to be a grift. And that's kind of what pisses me off is, you know, the most, is when they take these good albums and they're grifting like that off and so nakedly. It just it just puts me off, you know? It's not what Collective Records is about to me. It's not about having a bunch of boxes in here, you know? It's about having records and listening to shit and enjoying it, you know? So we... Here's the, here's the other sort of half of the record store day story. This is really just kind of a random funny. But uh, what I really kind of went there for, I need to get out of the house for a little while after being in the house with a headache all day, the previous two days. I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here for a while. So I went out there. I was like, I don't really need any records. I actually just gotten some shit in the mail I was really stoked about. I'll talk about a couple of them. But um, I... Uh, the I love my B&O, but it has one of those like automatic... like. Uh, things in the middle that detects the size of the record which is great except the the um when you put a 45 on since the thing is it just sort of presses down when you put on a 33 with a 45 it sort of hangs on the edge and it's a little bit weird so i uh it kind of bothers me so if it's a record i play a lot i generally put in one of those little snap in rings in the center and um, I bought a bunch of them a while ago online so i'd have them but they have like these little sort of pegs in them and i hate them I kind of just decided a few days ago that I hate them. And specifically, for, for, since I've been playing a lot of 45s, I was like, you know something, I'm just going to upgrade those like, snap and things. I'm going to get a pack at the store. So I go to the store, and they have them there. Like, I remember they have them there, but they're the same kind with those little things on them. These little sort of divots on the outside. Yeah, I don't think I have one here. I should have pulled one to show, but uh, oh well, fuck it. Anyway, so, so the specific thing annoyed me, and they didn't have the right kind. I was like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? So I was bullshitting with the person there a little bit, talking about how I thought the fucking Pharaoh Sanders box that was a grift or something like that. And she was like, hey, you know, we have uh, one here if you want it. And it's funny because I really needed one. I was ready to get a pack of them because I'm sure I'm going to find more that I want to replace too. But the one I really wanted was for my Dragster 45. Because um, I've been playing this one kind of a lot. I love this fucking record. No, I don't have the sleeve with it to show off. But So um, it was just like sitting in the country. Like, yeah, this has been sitting here for like a year. So you can just take this one if you want it. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> you kind of just saved me like gambling. The vinyl style ones might have been right. But I really just needed one, so I got one. But here's the punchline. Check this fucking thing out. I've never seen one of these before. 
what the fuck is Vans doing making those things? <laughs> now watch, someone in the comment section is gonna know. But, uh, they have fucking Vans snapping thing, like the shoes, man. I don't know what the hell uh, the occasion for that was or how it ended up at that record store. But now it's mine, and, uh, what can I say? I said no way. In case that joke didn't make any sense, I'll just fucking fire this up for a second so y'all can sort of chuckle along with my uh, weak-ass little joke there. Yeah. So here's one that came in the mail recently. I said I'd mention this one. Uh, yeah, I actually, we recently hired a guy at my company who uh, was in the... Uh, a reasonably well-known band out of Houston, Texas, actually, but I don't want to, it's not really my place to go into his business or anything, so, uh, but he was talking about this other band that he, like, had played with that was really good at the time, it was Oliver Magnum, who made this record, and I kind of ignored this one because it kind of looks like a punk record, and it's like 89, and it's on New Renaissance, and New Renaissance made some great records, but they also made some real fucking clunkers, too, you know? Like, New Renaissance is one of those labels that's sort of, um, you know, a lot of times I sort of advocate for shopping by label. You're not really going to go wrong with, like, Metal Blade or Combat or Megaforce. But some you will. Like, Shrapnel will lead you wrong, and New Renaissance will really need you wrong, do you wrong, because they made so many records. You can end up with piles of shit on New Renaissance. So I'd sort of, st I hadn't really bothered with this one, but I, um, I, I took the guy's word for it. I checked it out, and this record is really good, man. It's a new one to me. It's just a really solid thrash record, you know? It isn't really changing the world or anything, right? But it has that sort of American thrash sound, and it's just really well executed, and the songs are good, man. So I gotta say, this is one you haven't heard me hype before, but uh, I'm here to say some nice things about Oliver Magnum. I wish they'd come up with a better name for themselves, but uh, hey... Not every band can be Fist, right? <laughs> or Skull Fist, that's another great name. So yeah, Oliver Magnum is totally worth a listen, man. If you looked at this you thought it was a punk record because of the cover, as, you know, I strongly suspect that it might be. No, it's fucking balls out metal, unapologetically too, so... It's not even like, you know, a crossover thing like the Deathcore record or something like that. Right? I actually played this one earlier today too, just so you know that, uh... Here in the Metal Theologian household, we do listen to Motorhead on occasion, too. So, you know, one of my very favorite things about this record is the way he pronounces the L in stay clean. Like, you really hear the Englishness there, you know what I mean? Because Americans always say clean, but they're like, stay clean, you know? Anyway, classic record. I don't think you need me to tell you it's a classic record. And now everyone gets the deny joke, right? Because I'm sure y'all have the deny record because, uh, you know, they were such a smash of success in the uh, 80s. So, got a little mystery record here. So, another thing that came in the mail was a, um, a record that came from Ride Easy. And, uh, I don't know why I got this. I don't know who sent this, or if it was a promo or what. So, if you did me, if you're out there and you did me a solid, let me know so I can thank you properly and shit. But, uh, because I wanted to check this out anyway. I actually haven't heard Mondo Drag before. But, um, it's pretty clear they're a hard-working band, just from how much they seem to be touring. And Riding Easy tends to put out some good shit, you know? So I've been curious about Mondo Drag for a while, and it was sort of one of those bands where, you know, next time I'm on one of my stoner rock kicks, I was kind of intending to check it out. So, let this sealed for now. We're going to bust this out uh, and check it out for the first time together. So if there's an ad on it, it's for them and not me. And you know something? I don't resent that, because these guys fucking, they probably deserve it. And I'm trying not to, like, screw this thing up. Usually I just, like, rub it on my jeans, like, you know, the way we did it back in the old days. But, uh, I'm not 
not wearing jeans at the moment, so it doesn't work with. Uh, so I've never tried it with corduroys. It doesn't work if you're wearing like you know dress pants or something like that. You probably just put a hole in your fucking pants. Not that I'm wearing dress pants either. I'll leave it to y'all's imagination what kind of pants I'm wearing. If any. All right, Mondo Drag. We're gonna check them out. This is a first listen for me. Maybe not a first listen for you because um, this band does seem reasonably well known. This isn't like you know some like nobody band from Argentina or something. You know, they seem to be out there. It's a cool riding, easy label. Mondo Dragon. Let's check this bad boy out. I bet it's really good. You know, I'm really tempted to not give it this initial wipe. Because I'm sure that if I, like, started this record right for the factory without um, dusting it, that someone in the chat in the comments would mold about it. And, you know, I'm all about antagonizing you, the viewer. Yeah, seriously, I've been looking forward to checking this out. You know what's funny, too, man, is um, I've gotten a little bit fed up with some of the gatefold excess that you see on a lot of new records, because I feel like if you're going to do a gatefold, you should have a reason. This sounds fucking great, by the way. But I can totally get behind this. Like, that's good use of the space in the gatefold, you know? That serves a purpose. That, like, means something. You know, it's just like a big shot of the band standing there, or like a collage or something. I just think that's kind of lame. It's like not every record needs to have a gatefold, you know? That's some pretty solid art too, man. Dude, I love the way the keys sound on this. I love how it has that sort of stoner vibe at the same time as it sounds kind of primitive and kind of straight rock. It's kind of like what I like about the new wave of British heavy metal stuff, you know what I mean? A lot of those bands, even full-on metal ones, have a little bit of sort of a hard rocky sort of aesthetic to them, and I hear that in this, too. Yeah, whoever sent this to me, man, thank you, because this is fucking really good, dude. I'll have to spend more time with these guys. totally get behind this shit. Oh, what's up with that, man? My fucking video stopped in the background. I was going to hype this channel a little bit, too. Ah, fuck it. I've been watching this channel called Dave's Little Beasties, and the guy, like, keeps spiders. Oh, fuck. That's installing ESPN. God damn it. Fuck that shit. I like to have shit in the background because every time someone will be like, what the fuck are you watching or something? And it, you know, it amuses me, but I need fucking ESPN back there. God damn it. Fucking smart TV, right? Yeah, so Dave's Little Beasties, man. Like, my wife makes fun of me because I've kind of been obsessed with this channel. But this guy, like, he, like, breeds spiders and shit and he talks about them. But he treats them really gently. And, like... I'm, like, not into having spiders on me. Like, I respect spiders. I don't, like, kill them and shit. I'm glad to have them around, especially living someplace where there are a lot of bugs. But, like, I don't really want to fuck with them, right? But this guy, even though he keeps them, he really doesn't fuck with them either, you know what I mean? He, like, treats them really gently in that, and, like, sort of babies the little hatchlings and shit, like the nymphs, the, the slings. So, like, I've learned a ton just, like, watching this shit. But even more than that, like, I had a stressful week a couple weeks ago at work. And I just found this shit, like, him sort of, like, babying these guys, like, with a paintbrush and shit. I just found it, like, meditative almost, you know? I'll, like, sit back and watch this guy for, like, an hour or two or three and just, like, take it in and just, like, feel so relaxing, you know? And you wouldn't think watching these huge-ass fucking spiders that, like, you wouldn't want to encounter in the wild would be relaxing, but... I don't know, man. It just does it for me, so, uh... Yeah, Dave's Little Beasties, if you're interested. He's a bigger channel than mine. He doesn't need my help, but uh, I've been hooked. Yeah, this is really good, man. I'm really digging this record a lot. <laughs> what else do we have to show here? I pulled this one out. 
Another one that Lars sort of put on his comp, so I guess people know about it, but this is the Weapon 12-inch. This also came out as a 7-inch. I have the 12-inch. Set the Stage Alight is probably the better song. It's a really good heavy metal record. As far as I know, this is all they ever did. I almost said One and Done, but like, I don't even know if One and Done counts if all they did was a 45, you know? Like, One and Done, I even think they made one album, you know? God, I love how the vocals are back, but they're still good, you know what I mean? A lot of times, like, uh, like these, these guys will have kind of a weak singer, sort of, be sort of behind, and they might still be good, you know, but that can really hurt a band for me. Of course, I like a lot of instrumental bands, too, but uh, in this style. But this is just right, man. Mono drag fucking rules, man. Anyway, so does Weapon. And it's not the most expensive one out there, at least not last time I checked, so... Uh, might be worth looking into. There are a couple options. There are kind of a lot of these out there, even though it's all they did, so. Yeah, another one I kind of rolled the dice on recently. Uh, <laughs> this is really a little bit of a clunker. This is kind of, it doesn't quite go into the bad records category. But I couldn't resist the fucking cover on the watch. I mean, look at that. <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, even though it's called Rockin' Tonight, when your cover is that good, <laughs> I'll give it a chance, you know? And you know, he's playing a fine B. And he has a mustache. Of course, he's not European, and the Americans put, couldn't pull that off. They're Canadian. I don't know about the, um, I, I don't know where mustaches stood in Canada in the 80s, but uh, they were kind of over in the 80s in the US, but in Europe, they're still getting away with them, so. Uh, they actually got two mustaches here, too. I don't want to. Overlook Lance's mustache here. So, fucking guy posing like Robert Plant, too. Anyway, this is, I mean, this is a pretty enjoyable record, but it's really not great. Like, I don't necessarily recommend you run out and grab this thing. It's, uh, you know, it's really more like a hard rock record than even like a fully committed metal record. And it's definitely pretty corny. Yeah, it's really pretty corny, this record, man. There's a song here called Canadian Girls. Yeah, it really doesn't live... Well, I don't know, maybe it does live up to the cover, because the cover's kind of second-rate, too. Or third or fourth. But, um, you know, it's it's not really a banger. Uh, it's just sort of a fun record, and you've got nothing else to listen to, and you're like, oh, I'll pull out that fucking... The Watch record, you know? Which means, once again, that it probably beats out way better records that I have sitting around here just because sometimes you don't want to listen to the best stuff, you know what I mean? Not every record can be the best record, and not every record should be the best record. I really kind of believe that, you know? I think people get this like weird notion in their heads that they have to like all their records. And... You know, there's some shit that I just loathe, you know, that I just don't want in my fucking house. Like, there's no U2 in here. There are no police records in here. There are no Steely Dan records in here. Because fuck all that shit, man. That shit just sucks, you know? But, you know, sometimes I want to listen to some shitty records, like some Foreigner or something. I'm kind of off that kick that I was on a couple weeks ago. And I was really showing a lot of bad records. But that sort of dive bar jukebox aesthetic. I don't know, man. I think there's a time and a place for that, you know? Maybe it's just me. And maybe for you, you get that off a U2 record, too, you know? Just don't pretend you like U2. Because who the fuck likes U2? Yeah, this is kind of an unfocused video, but I keep getting distracted by the, uh, <laughs> by how good this record is, man. Yeah, Record Store Day Griff. You know, the other thing was it set me off a little bit. I was at the record store today. Was I don't want to single anyone out here, right? And I don't want to yuck anyone's yum either. But you hear all this hype about these new, you know, these tone poets or whatever else. Like all this hype about these new fucking like releases, which a lot of times is just the same old shit. Um, the latest batch of tone poets that are coming soon. I saw some hype about them on the Jazz Bones channel, and they, there's some good picks there. There's like some Bobby Hutcherson records, including one I don't even have. 
and um, there's a Freddie Roach record there that hasn't gotten reissued in a while, and not just the same old shit. So I'm like, okay, that's nice, okay. But I go to the record store today, right? And like after hearing people talk about how they're excited about some fucking Bill, another Bill Evans box set or some shit like that, um, I go in there and there's a Leon Spencer record just sitting there, a new reissue of it. And Leon Spencer's fucking great, man. Those records are, like, funky and soulful, and, like, the, the keys just sound great. He's a great player, you know what I mean? I have, like, I don't know, two or three Leon Spencer records, and I love them all. And, I mean, I like Bill Evans, too. I like Bill Evans a lot. But, like, how many of those fucking records do you need, you know? I think I have, like, seven or eight. And that's plenty. That's probably a couple more than what I need, you know what I mean? Or like Art Blakey, there's always another fucking Art Blakey record. How many Art Blakey records do you need? I'd say about five, you know? I really like Art Blakey. But you don't need 20 fucking Art Blakey records. And when people are, when I hear people hyping this shit, and then I look, there's this great Leon Spencer record just sitting there. I'm like, why isn't anyone picking up on this shit? You know what I mean? Or like, uh, there were two Larry Young records there that are both fantastic. I'm like, Larry Young fucking rules, you know? Why is everyone geeking out because there's another fucking reissue of the same Freddie Hubbard record that they've done five times in the last five years? You know, it's like, shut up about those and, like, dig a little bit deep. Again, there's this thing called Other Records, you know? So, yeah. You know, again, I don't want to shit on people's streams when, you know, they're streams that I generally enjoy, you know? But it's like, man, there's a whole fucking universe out there. You can keep digging and digging forever. You don't need to just fucking dig into the fucking Bill Evans catalog forever. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. How many... So, yeah, that's why we're here on the Metal Theologian channel to a champion the underdog, man. That's how we're going to hype Mondo a drag. Because even though they're kind of big as far as these sorts of bands go, they're still not like these legends that people like spend like hours and hours freaking out about, you know? So do yourself a favor, man. <laughs> and do me a favor if you sent me this thing, because I want to know. Good stuff. What else do we have here? I think that was most of the stories. I've been talking about this Jaguar record a little bit lately, too, actually, because I've been talking about how this is kind of the best entry point for this band, I think, over the LP uh, Power Games, which I think sounds kind of anemic. Yeah, and just having listened to it again within the last couple of days, man, I stand by my hype. You know, if you're a sound quality stickler, you might not like it, but if you're a sound quality stickler, you can fuck off anyway. You shouldn't be listening to this kind of music. You know, go listen to your Steely Dan records. The mix leaves a little bit to be desired, but the energy on this thing is just second to none in their catalog. Even even with the single Axe Crazy, which is the one that I think is probably their best record. I mean, I still love that one, man. But those songs are on here, as is, um, oh, the song that was on Heavy Metal Heroes, War Machine, I'm pretty sure it was, but I could be wrong. So, and then some songs that, came, that were on Power Games just sound better on this, man. Better listen, you know. Yeah, I pulled out a couple other uh, Buried by Time and Dust ones too. I played this one a few times too, this Radium one, which comes with, uh, it's put away, but it comes with a replica of the original single and it's a lot cheaper than the original single. So, uh, you know, if you don't have that, You know, if you don't have this, if I can find the fucking thing, there it is. If you didn't manage to luck into one of those, you can get one that's pretty much identical along with this record, which is a really cool live set. Again, it has a lot of energy. It's funny, this guy still had those sideburns as late as like the early 80s, isn't it? I don't know, man. It's really good. Anyway, Radium, don't snooze on these guys if you like that kind of music. 
which you probably do if you're watching, especially at fucking 29 minutes in. Anyway, that's about all I've got for today, so a uh, little bit all over the place, but uh, maybe good for a couple chuckles. Thanks as always for watching. Appreciate it.